And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at my father's work. In my father's work, you are the son or daughter of a mad scientist and you want to make them proud. You're trying to follow their legacy. Except in this game, not only are you the son, you will be the grandson and then great-grandson. You're playing through three generations against some other players in this game where you are ha, 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 a mad scientist. Okay, so this game comes with an app. You play through this app. There are many, many, many various endings that you can have, but you are playing against other players in a story-based game that's all about worker placement, trying to score points. Let me show you a little bit about how the game works. To start the game, you simply will click New Game here in the app. It will ask you to choose a voice. The masculine voice is Ben Maddox. Um, the feminine voice, I think, sounds like a robot. But you pick one, and then you continue. It asks you how many players are playing the game, and then it's going to start having you give a name for each player. After you pick the names of each player and the name of your town, you're going to pick a scenario here. So let's say you pick the first scenario, the cost of disease. So you're going to do, it will tell you how to do the setup, but you're also going to use the cost of disease scenario box. So the game comes with three scenario boxes here, and each of these scenario boxes is chock full of components here. Now, I want to be really clear, I don't consider this spoilers to show you stuff that's in these because you don't know what it means anyway. But you'll see there's a bunch of components. Look, there's heart components and Frankenstein components. You know what they mean? Yeah, who cares? You'll figure out. And then there's some cards and things. So all this is in here, and much of it or I should say some of it will be used during the course of your game, but much of it will not. There are still pieces in these scenarios that I don't know. At this point, the app is gonna give you a fairly long story. It will like show, here's a letter, here's more story, and here's more story, and now it's telling you what to do. So this will tell you something set up to do specific to this scenario. Here's some, it's telling you where to put some tokens on the track, how to set things up. And you can see there's a lot of different setup here. And then this is what the app's gonna look like during the course of a round. Now, one of the things you'll do is you're gonna be placing out the board. So we're playing the cost of disease, so usually it will start on board one. So we just put the board like this. So this is how the board is going to look. You have an insanity track down here, a creepy track up here. You're gonna be playing for th three generations. Each generation is made up of three rounds. Over here, you have different things you can build into your manner. Each player is going to start with you, and you, there's all different miniatures included with the game, but it's the base that matters. So the hexagon base is you, the round circular base is your spouse, and then you have a caretaker, and you have another caretaker and two servants who are in the lost area. You keep track here of your knowledge in chemistry, biology, engineering, and the occult, and here are spots for you to place rooms that you get. Everyone gets a storage shed. Now, I don't want to get into all the details of the game, um, but what's going to be happening over the course of each round, our players are going to be taking their workers on your turn. You're going to be putting one somewhere on the board, and, or you're going to pass. Once everyone passes, the round will end. When the round ends, you'll click continue here to go to the next round. So I would click here, and sometime it will tell you what to do at the end of a round, and sometimes, oh! There's a special event with a lot more text to read, and it will tell you, oh, everyone gets a servant from the lost pile, and then we go back to the next round. Sometimes something will happen during the round. If a player reaches the fourth space on the creepy track, click here. So you would click there, and it will ask some questions like, who did it? And the three players in this game are named Doom, Strange, and Evil, all doctors, and you would say, Dr. Doom did this, and this one, Dr. Doom's gonna look at this, and it's secret, so secret, you can't see it. So players are going to be doing things, and so you are going to be sending out your servants. The round bases can go to town, and your spouse is basically a servant in this game. Read into that what you will. And your, your main character, they can go anywhere. They can go to town or to the manor, while your caretakers can only go to spaces in the manor. Most of the spaces in town, at least in this beginning scenario, and they're mostly similar to this, are gonna give you resources. There are gears, there are animals, there are dead bodies, there are 
these chemicals here with these little vials. Sometimes also there's knowledge of the three different types and knowledge of the occult. And then money, of course, is a resource. So when we look at this one here, for example, if I go here to the park, I get a vial. If I go here, I get an animal. Here I get a gear. If I go to the builder's office, I can pay money to build more buildings that will give me special abilities onto my board. Um, I can go to the cemetery to take a body, but if I do so, I move up on the creepy track and the villagers get more irritated. If the villagers and you ever cross, you're no longer to send, able to send people to town, except for the church. You can always go to church and here you can pay money to move your token back on the creepy track. Or you can go to the town hall later on to move the villagers back. You can go to the traveling caravan and you can get the occult knowledge, but again, that moves you up on the creepy track that's at the top of the board. So this creepy track is important, but there's also an insanity track down here. As you move on the insanity track, it moves you on the creepy track and can make certain of your people go to this law section, but you also get these compulsion cards. Compulsion cards, you must do something on them. If you do it, you're going to get the victory points. You know, uh, this says must record knowledge. So I record knowledge and yay, I get a victory point. But if you have two compulsion cards at the end of a generation, then you get to draw one of these um, maladjustment cards, which are, you know, you're clingy. Now your spouse has to go with someone else to take actions. Or have an existential crisis. If you enter a generation on space six or higher in the insanity track, you lose five victory points, and you'll have that for the next generation. You'll also be placing people on your manor. Um, you can go here to record knowledge, which means you spend cubes. You spend one cube to move to the first level and spend two to go to the next level. And you do that because you get bonuses um, as you get to the second level. And when you get to the third level, you get to build these special buildings, which are worth victory points. But also, when you do experiments in the future, you don't need two green cubes. You're already on here, so it counts as if you have two of them. And that's the main focus of this game. You have experiments. This is where you perform experiments. Now, experiments come in three different decks, A, B, and C, at least for the base game. When you do an experiment, let's say I want to do this obedience training, I need to give up an animal. And then I get two green cubes and one victory point. This is the main way to get knowledge cubes. It also gives me an A experiment, which is important because to do a B experiment, I need an A. This one I need an animal and two green cubes. But look, I don't need the green cubes because my token's there. I just need an animal again. And this gives me two animals, moves me one in the creepy track, and gives me three victory points. If I have one A and two Bs done, I can do the C, which costs three of those vials, three blue cubes. Gives me seven victory points. Eight victory points beyond that if I do it in the first generations, and four if I do it in the second generation. And then in many of the scenarios, you will even have some major um, thing that you're trying to do. So for example, I might be trying to do this lycanthropic strength. I'm trying to become a werewolf. But this needs one A, two Bs, three Cs, and then a whole pile of other stuff. You can use occult knowledge as wilds, so that's fantastic, but every time you use occult knowledge, your madness increases by one. All kinds of events and things will happen as the rounds go by. After the third round, you go to the next generation and you lose everything. You lose your money, your resources, your experiments you've done. You can keep one experiment in your hand you haven't done. You can keep one experiment underneath here to record experiments so I can say, oh, well, I already did a C, so I don't need to do that C later on. And of course, some buildings might allow you to keep stuff from game to game. And then all kinds of things might happen. This might be your town, but later on, the town might change to a, a town that has a different building. Or this is your town now. Or look how nice the town looks in this point. There's all kinds of towns and various things, and I've not seen all of them in each scenario. I think each scenario has, I think, 18, 18 different possibilities for towns, and all kinds of things can happen with the tokens. There's a lot going on. There's gonna be victory points given out at the end of the game for a few buildings, but many of the victory points will be gotten during the game. And then the tokens and things in this box are also going to affect how you get points over the course of the game. After three generations, whoever has the most points is the winner. 
So for the most part, I really like the components. There's a lot to talk about with components, so I'll try to be as brief as I can. The book being placed here on the board is fantastic. To have these different towns, I mean, they all kind of look the same, but there is minor, subtle changes. I like the different characters. The miniatures look great. It doesn't really matter what miniature goes in that, which is kind of cool. Um, when you, at the beginning of the game, they're like, pick a miniature. Every game I played, everyone just takes one of each. Although, these trays are nice, but it's kind of annoying that these tokens, these bases, don't stay on the miniatures. So you have to snap them on and off every time. Um, there's some tokens here that you'll put on the board to show, hey, when something gets to a certain track piece, you need to read the app. The other trays work pretty well. This is like really overproduced. Everyone who walked by when I was playing this said, oh, it's a Kickstarter. Yeah, it is. I mean, like the coffins are different. The animals are different. Uh, you know me, I love blinging out games, but even I was like, do you really need to have all these animals different? Well, it's cool and they fit in here well. I don't mind this, although I was disappointed that these vials were empty. I'm gonna have to film with hot glue or something. Uh, the only major component issue I have are these tokens here, as you can see, fall over so easily. I would have actually rather had cubes for these just because they fall over and when you're playing the game, they hide the bonus that you got from them. I found that to be annoying. So that part was a little annoying. Um, the cards, the artwork, and everything else is good. Now, of course, the main feature here when it comes to components is the app itself. Now, the app has a back button, which lets you skip back to find different things. Sometimes it's skipped back a little farther than I want it to, but I do like this. I like that the app's here. It explains the special rules. You know, if you do something here or at the end of a round, you click on here, it will tell you exactly what to do. I found this to be very handy. And then there's text. And folks, there is text, 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 tons of it. Some of it's red, not all of it is. Um, and we got to the point when our games where we were playing, we just started kind of cycling through the text because there was so much of it. But other than that, everything does fit in the box and happily they tell you on the side just how it fits in. The rule book was very clear. I very rarely needed to look anything up in it. I was pretty happy with all, you know, with the components all around. Okay, so let's talk about some of the negatives of my father's work. Because, spoiler alert, I like this game, but I want to talk about there are some issues with it. It is a long game. There is no question. I don't care how fast you play, because I'm pretty fast at playing this now. I've played this multiple times here, and it, you know, there's just so much going on in it that I don't think it can be played quickly. I won't play it at this point with four. It's just too long. With three players, every game of three players for me has taken three hours. I played one two-player game that took two and a half hours. So um, it's, it's a lengthy game. So that, uh, you just got to realize that's a thing. It would be even more lengthy if you read out loud or listened to out loud all the text. There is essentially a novel in this thing. Now let me be clear. It's good writing. It's not bad. It does feel like they were trying to sneak a book in here at some point. And you don't necessarily need all that writing. I mean, some of the writing, in, in, for example, in the third scenario, Time of War, there was some really funny stuff in there, I thought. And it's, you know, it's, it's just silliness involved. But I think they could have pared it down a lot, and I would have still got the same kind of feeling. I'm a fast reader. And even I was like, ah, ah, ah. And if you read all that, it would add hours to the game, I think. So we were at the point where like, yeah, 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 yeah. What does it actually tell us to do? And I don't normally like the phrase, you know, too long, don't read type thing. But in this case, it would have been kind of helpful. Um, so I, I just feel like they could have cut it down by almost 50% the amount of text in the game. The game also has a smidgen of luck in the sense of sometimes you just get the cards you need. There's a space you can go on the board that lets you draw three cards from the deck. When you record knowledge, you can cycle cards. So you can get the cards out. But if you get the cards that perfectly match each other, and which could happen sometimes, it you don't have to do that cycling. So you're ahead of the other players slightly. And there's also a very small smidgen of take that and smack the leader down. Although in this game, I did not have as much of a problem with it. 
So, I say all that to say, this game is so fun. Like, unbelievably fun. I did not think, when I first played the first game of this, and it was three hours and a euro, I was like, I don't know. And then I played through that first scenario again, I played the, the disease one, and everything was different. Now, they say your choices will change things, and sometimes they change regardless of your choice or whatever, you know, you're not sure. I made definitely we made different choices, and it was a completely different game. And then I played the second one and the third one, and like the first one, you are like a mad scientist trying to cure people's illnesses with being mad scientists. Like, I, one time I think I was trying to bring them back from the dead or something to that effect. Um, and the the second one, the town people just hate you, and you're like, you will love me, which, as we all know, works very well. And the third one, you're just like, let's take over the world. So I, I it's so amusing, and and that's the thing, the game is long. But I am invested the whole time for a couple reasons. One, turns are really quick. I'm like, I'm putting out a worker, get a resource. Oh, I'm doing this, finish the experiment. But I care about what you're doing. I'm watching where you place your stuff. You, when you do things, there's events happening. And the app has things happen and consistently change and the world's dynamic and it's interesting. And when it's done, I'm like, wow, that was three hours, but it was a very fun, involved three hours. See, and we're not opposed necessarily to long games here. What is opposed to long games of like long downtime? There's not much downtime in this, and it's entertaining. The fact that it's different each time, the names of the experiments are funny. I had a flaming pitchfork I created in one game. Um, in another game, uh, what did I? Uh, I was I had a duel with somebody, um, and there's just all kinds of things that are going on, and it's it's intriguing. That you never know what's around the corner. I guess if you play a scenario over, make the same decisions, you might get to a point and go, ooh, I know what this choice will lead to. But even then, who cares? This is like a Euro game, but this Euro game evolves, and it almost has a legacy-esque feel within three hours. By the way, the three hours also mitigate it because you can pack up the game and save your game. I would never do that. Play through it or don't play through it at all. But I really enjoy this. The worker placement. If you place a worker on the main board, your workers, and you place and someone and you place your worker where someone else already is or you already are, you have to pay a coin. But your master doesn't have to do that. In fact, when they go to a spot, they get to do it twice. Well, that means your master's fantastic. But I also need my master back here in the in my manor conducting experiments. And also I want to figure out how to get more workers, because sometimes that pops up. And do I touch the occult or not? Because it's tempting, it's wild and wild's amazing. But it also makes you insane. And insanity is good sometimes, but also bad. And all this comes out. This has an incredibly strong theme. This whole mad scientist thing, I'm sick of games that pretend to be mad scientisty, and they just show you a picture of Frankenstein. Also, a nice aside here, I guess you can build Frankenstein in this game or something like akin to that. But there's so much more to mad scientist than building Frankenstein, and this game lets you do all of them. Now, like I said, it is a straight Euro. Like, if you're looking for mansions of madness, this is not that. This is not going through and fighting off baddies. I mean, that sort of thing could happen maybe in the background, but it's all about worker placement, collecting resources to fulfill contracts, experiments in this game. But it does so in an entertaining, interesting way. This game feels like T.C. Petty's magnum opus. Like. You, 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 you can tell he's worked on this for a long time. Is it bumpy? Occasionally. Did I find little minor things in the app that felt like bugs? Possibly. Nothing that was overwhelmingly, but there was a couple times I was like, did the app, did they mean to tell me this, to pay this money when we don't even have no one, you just made us all lose our money or something to that effect? It's minor things, but I'm sure that stuff will be ironed out as it went through. But the app was neat. It wasn't distracting. The app isn't taking over the game. You set it aside. You're playing the game, and every once in a while you're like, get the app out. App, what's our... This happened? Oh my goodness. And I like that. I like the tough choices it makes, the, 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 the low downtime, and I'll overlook the length. I'll overlook the overly effusive pros. I'll overlook the, you know, just some of these minor things because it's so much fun that comes ahead. I was at a place and I took a pile of games and I sat there and I was like, I have all these new games, but I can play my father's work. Fine, I'll play my father's work. So we played it. Then I was like, and I wanna play some other games. 
or I could play my father's work again. I can't tell you folks how rarely that happens to me. I love games, but I'm always going out and seeking a new one. Now, part of that is, I'll be honest, this is like a new game each time I play. So that's interesting to me. And it's very, very fun. I very much recommend this. Now, there's some caveats. Again, you need to know what you're getting into, and it's long and all that. But if you get into the experience, I'll tell you what, this is absolutely a blast. Lots of fun. My father's work. Very high recommendation for me. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment. Excellent.